Introducing... The Daredevils of Hollywood. All right, boys, keep those cameras turning. Keep those sirens going. I'm going to jump. Hey, you fellas with the net, come in a little closer. Joe, make that spotlight a little hotter. Yeah, that's a piece of a fire, Mr. Baker. This ought to make a swell scene. Yeah, well, it's costing enough money. Holy cat, look, the whole roof is about to fall in. Good him. Jump! Bill, jump! Uh, look out! Run! There he comes! Steady with the net, men! He made it! Okay for camera on that! Okay, here, show we got it! And it's okay for me! Print that one! Say, that was a sweet jump, Bill. You got out just in time. You all right? Oh, sure. Sure, I'm okay. That's all for tonight. Call for 8 o'clock in the morning, everybody. Stage 9. From the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes, those daring unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions, whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death, those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth, the Suicide Squad, the movie stuntmen, the daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in bringing you this copyrighted feature, we are privileged to have as our guest one of the top-notch stuntmen of Hollywood, Cliff Lyon. It is through his cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of his dangerous profession. The thrilling scenes you are about to hear are his own actual experiences. Cliff Lyons is here in the studio right now, and later in the program we will bring him to the microphone. But first, let us learn something of his job. It is a beautiful afternoon in 1924. The Ben Wilson Company is on location near Inglewood, California. They have been shooting scenes all day, but the big moment is about to arrive. The story calls for a very dangerous scene, and the man who is to do that scene, Cliff Lyons, is just coming on the location set. Francis Ford, the director, greets him. Well, uh, hi, Cliff. Hello, Mr. Ford. So you're just about on time. We're almost ready for your scene. Okay, well, what's the gag? Well, uh, you see that train standing down there about a half a mile? Yep. And there's another one waiting down there a half mile in the opposite direction. Now, we're going to start this train coming toward us. You're supposed to drive a car along the highway there, parallel with the tracks. I see. Now, the train will beat your car to the crossing by about 50 feet. So you turn down the tracks and run alongside the train. I get it. You mean drive uh, between the double tracks with the train. That's right. Now, the idea is to transfer from the car to the train. You just crawl through a window in the coach and let the car go. Yeah, I see. But uh, what about the other car? Now, that'll be coming from the opposite direction on the other track. Your job is to get through that window just before the two trains meet. Okay, that's good enough for me, but that car, it's going to be a mess. Yes, it'll fold up like an accordion between the trains, but let's hope you're out of it by that time. We're ready for the test with the trains, Mr. Ford. All right, I'll be right with you. Well, Cliff, you all set? Yeah, but there's a little timing I want to do first. <laughs> okay, but be sure your watch doesn't stop. times the scene is rehearsed. Speeds of the moving train are carefully checked and rechecked, timed to the split second. The engineers, obviously nervous, are instructed by Mr. Lyons and Mr. Ford in each minute detail. Everyone is stationed at his post. Cameras are set. Tension dominates the scene. The slightest mistake will cost a human life. Far apart, facing each other, the two trains stand motionless, puffing like two spirited horses, tense with apprehension. While far down the highway, Cliff Lyons, calmly, almost nonchalantly, crawls into the car and sits relaxed, awaiting the signal to start. The director is giving last-minute instructions. Okay, we're ready to shoot. Everybody on his toes, this is a take. Hi. This is the picture. All ready, everybody? Yeah, we're all set, Mr. Ford. All right, give him the signal. Here they come. Yeah, so far, so good. Man, is that train bowling the jack? Wait, it's coming too fast. Keep those cameras going. This got that bus wide open. Looks like it's about to fall apart. It's making the turn at the crossing. Look at him bumping alongside that train. He's got to look at the other train. It's coming like a bullet. He'll never make it. He won't have time. He's got to make it. Get in that window, Cliff, quick! He's got his hands on the windowsill. Climb in that window, Cliff. Hurry! Hurry! Hey, 
If that boy's alive, it's a miracle. Come on, let's run down there. There he is. Getting off the train. He's all right. Come on. Was that all right, Mr. Ford? Did you get a good shot? I'll say we got a shot. We lost two cameras in the crash, but we got a beauty with the other one. I thought you were a goner for a minute. That was too close. Yeah, it was plenty close, all right. I guess those engineers got excited. They were a little heavy on the throttle. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the courageous young man who daily laughs in the face of death and who made that scene, Cliff Lyons, interviewed by Kurt Foreman. That certainly was a thrilling stunt, Cliff, and I'd say you were pretty lucky. Yeah, I guess I was at that. Tell me, what was your reaction when you saw the trains approaching each other so fast? All I was interested in was getting through that window. Well, were you scared? Oh, not exactly. I was too busy to be scared, but I felt a little funny when it was all over. Say, Cliff. Have you ever been really scared? Well, now, uh, do you want the truth? The whole truth. Well, uh, yes. I have been scared. And uh, when was that? Uh, right now. You mean this microphone? Yeah, it's, it's almost got me. Well, I wouldn't let that get you down. Now, you do all kinds of stunts, don't you? That's right. Uh, but my favorite is horse stunts. You know, high jumps, falls, and dives into water on horseback, things like that. Did you ever have any close calls while doing these stunts? Yes, I have. I remember once on a stagecoach gag... Uh, uh, just just a minute. Did you say gag? Yeah, we call them gags. Well, uh, this stagecoach was supposed to run down a steep mountain road. And on a sharp curve, the horse is to break loose and make a turn while the stagecoach goes over the embankment and drops about 200 feet. I'm supposed to drive, but uh, have we got time to hear about it? We certainly have, Cliff, and we're going to hear about it in just a moment. But... First, a word from our sponsor. Okay, Cliff, now let's hear about that stagecoach uh, gag. Well, uh, it was down on location at Calabasas, California. That's about 20 miles from Hollywood. Johnny Mac Brown was making a western picture. Henry McRae, the director, was explaining to me how the gag worked. Now, you see, Cliff, we've got an airplane cable tied to the double tree. And when the coach gets the turn, we'll pull the cable and release the horses. And that's when I jump, huh? Right. But don't hesitate. That hack is going to sail off into space like a bird. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, boys. We're ready to go. Roll them. Go ahead, Cliff. Hey, look, Mac. Something's gone wrong. The coach is making the turn. Yes, but the horses are loose. Look, the stage is running wild down the hill. Gosh, I'd hate to be in that guy's shoes. Watch him. He's going to jump. He's all tangled up in the lines. There he goes. Look, the horses are dragging him. Stop those horses, men. Stop them. There goes the coach over the bank. Look at that. You must have been pretty badly hurt in that scene, weren't you, Cliff? No, just scratched up a little. The wagon ran over my arm and bruised a little bit, but uh, I was okay. And how far did the horses drag you? Oh, about 200 feet. But it seemed like a mile. Uh, tell me, something went wrong there. Whose fault was that? Oh, I guess somebody got excited and didn't pull the cable soon enough. Things like that often happen. People on the ground make mistakes. Maybe they cut a rope too soon or something like that. What usually happens to you stuntmen when your helpers make a mistake? Well, it just puts us in a tough spot, that's all. And what happens when you make a mistake? Well, in that case, we just have to do stunts for St. Peter. Cliff, how long have you been doing stunts for the movies? A little over 17 years. Say, that's quite a long time to be taking chances for a living. Oh, I guess you get used to it. I understand there have been quite a number of stuntmen killed. What about that? Well, uh, I'd say about uh, 300 have been killed and motion pictures started. And what about the fellows who are working now? How many are there active? Well, uh, there are about 30 recognized stuntmen. Of course, sometimes the stand-ins and a few extras will do easy things, such as falling downstairs or rolling down a cliff. We call those uh, bumps men. Tell me, Cliff, what's the difference between a stunt man and a bumps man? Well, when a bumps man makes a mistake, he breaks an arm or a leg. But uh, when a stunt man misses, it's curtains. Say, I imagine you stunt men carry considerable insurance. Well, now, there's where you're wrong. The cost is terrific. Why, uh, I recall an incident where a producer balked at a certain price I'd given him for a stunt. I told him I'd reduce the figure 90% if he'd take out some life insurance for me. He called Lloyd's of London and found that the premium covering the one stunt 
that I was to do was greatly in excess of the price that I'd given him originally. Since that time, we very seldom have any trouble in getting the prices we request. Well, Cliff, you certainly entertain us. And on behalf of our listeners, I want to sincerely thank you for coming here. I know that everyone joins me in hoping that we may have you on this program again very soon. Good luck, old boy. Thank <laughs> you.